Welcome back to the table. Today we have one of the biggest surprises, for me anyway, at Gen Con. We thought we'd known all the games that were going to be there, really, uh, but we didn't know that the next Azul was going to be there. Which is very exciting. It, very exciting. It, it is crazy exciting. Um, I was a fan of the original Azul. Not as much of a fan of the later ones. At Sintra, not so much. I like Summer Pavilion, though, quite Summer a bit. Summer Pavilion is my favorite. Yeah. So uh, of the three, that's the one I like the most. Although Azul, the original, is the one that I actually own. So Yeah, I mean... OG Azul kind of has a special place yeah, in a lot of people's yeah. hearts. But yeah, I agree. Summer Pavilion, all of them added a little bit uh, of something different. Summer Pavilion had a little bit of a combo-y feel that the other ones didn't mm -hmm. have, in my opinion. This one is called Queen's Garden, though. And I'm here to tell you, this is very different feeling than Azul. However, I think... I, I still feel like when I played it, I thought... This is Azul still for me. This is still reminiscent of Azul. Um, and I think that the things that were reminiscent for me were the way you were drafting and placing tiles, just like you would in any Azul game, yeah. right? You, you're always drafting and then you're placing things. This does play with it a lot. There's a lot of new things going oh, yeah. on. It is very different than the others. I would probably put like the first three in their own category and this in like a second trilogy kind of thing that's if a, they have anything else coming out that's a good way of looking at it and we're not going to get so this is our first impressions we had a chance to play this at the show a little bit and then we just played a three-player game just now so this is going to be our first impressions on this we're not experts at the game although i will tell you emily <laughs> might be because she schooled all of us uh, this is her we kind of have our finished board states here but we did reset things up so here we can explain the game a little bit um, and the biggest thing about this game that's different right from the get-go is what you're doing on your turn in terms of the draft. Mm -hmm. As you can see right here, there's a stack of these tiles and these hexagonal tiles on top. The tiles stacked on the bottom are the garden extensions. Those are going to be things that you place on your boards as well as the tiles that you're collecting out of the bag. So what you do on your turn though, when it comes around to you, if this is the sort of beginning of a round, you're going to take some of those tiles off of that garden extension stack. Depending on player count, there's going to be a different number of t uh, garden extensions, and that's going to basically dictate the round. But the round is actually going to keep going and going until every player passes, because on your turn, you're not just drafting, but you're also placing some of that stuff. You're also spending tiles, and, and both types of tiles, uh, as money, effectively, to get yep. those tiles out on your board. But when you take tiles off of here, you can take it in one of a couple different ways. You can take all of one color or all of one symbol. So for example, this right here, I could take these two blues or I could take these two flowers. The only thing you can't do is take two of the exact same tile. Yeah. So if there happen to be two blue flowers, you can't take both of those. Mm -hmm. So there are some restrictions on what you can take. But here's what's interesting. Let's say I take those two blue tiles. I'm gonna place them over here in this sort of holding ground. Now, if you've ever played something like Castles of Burgundy, this game plays nothing like it, <laughs> except this holding ground reminded me of it a little bit because sure. it, it's a game that forces you to take, take and you, you can't just place. keep taking. You have to place at a certain point because you might run out of space. And but, you will, you will run out of space. <laughs> absolutely. Once you take those tiles, this top extension is going to come off the stack and the next player's turn is going to get four more tiles on that next garden extension. So what this kind of introduces is this continual reveal. Mm -hmm. This game feels, I think that's one of the things I feel is that throughout the play, there is more of a reveal and more of an excitement with what's gonna happen next. Well, and also, so now that you have two reveals, <laughs> yeah. This isn't just, okay, do I want to take the two purples now? This is, now if I take birds, there's that bird or this bird. There are two yellows as well that I could take. Or there's three birds, I should say. So, and basically as you keep taking things from them, they're going to keep revealing four more come on top. And soon you have like a whole bunch of different garden extensions that have tiles on them. So there's a lot of different ways you can take it and then once you've taken everything off of a tile yeah get ready for this there's still more <laughs> then this flips and then the garden extension itself has um, a kind of tile built into it 
Um, so to take that, you would take it like you're taking any other tile. So now if I'm taking either blues or the little grass, I have to also take the whole garden extension and there's spots for that on my board as well. So it's a whole new element. It's cool because you're taking not just the tiles, but also the garden extensions. It's this reveal after reveal after then the final reveal. And it just feels like a lot's going on every time. Yeah, and one of the things that introduces is a lot more decision making because there's, in, in my opinion, there's a lot more of, oh, what do I want to do because of the next player's turn? Yep. Because if there's a tile like this, a garden extension that hasn't been revealed, let's say there's a tile on it, I could take that yellow. Maybe I want to take that yellow tree and this yellow bird and take yellows. But if I take this yellow, what's going to flip here? <laughs> could it be the garden extension that Emily really wants? And then I'm like, this is mine now. Thank you. <laughs> so that does introduce... A little bit of randomness, but I not I don't think so much randomness that you're not going to like that right. aspect of it. In my opinion, it is the right amount to really make it just exciting yes. continually throughout the round. Because in the original Azul, in fact, all of the Azuls thus far, you're setting up the six coasters mm -hmm. and just putting the tiles on there. That's the round. That's the, yeah. It does evolve a little bit because as you take them and they go, they kind of go into the center. But it's all very predictable and understandable as to what it is, but it can also be kind of deflating because you set up that first uh, round yeah. and you look at it and go, well, these are the things I wanted to do. But now that's going down. Yeah, it feels diminishing, right? Like yeah. the pool of options just keeps getting lower and lower until you're like, well, I'm gonna take this, they're gonna take that, they're gonna take that, and I'm gonna be left with these five things at the end. Whereas this, like you said, the reveal is every time, right? You're like, okay, now there's a new thing and now there's something else. And like, maybe I still have hope for that one tile that I needed. Maybe it's still in there. We're just hoping that it comes out at the right time. And you you still have control in it though, right? It's not super random where like, like you said, I can choose when to reveal new things by taking the tile before it. Or I can choose like, I'm not gonna take anything from the top ones because I don't want more things to reveal and I don't want you to have more options. So there's a bit of thinking that comes into it and thinking about when do I want the reveals to happen and is it advantageous to me? For sure. And you also, we haven't even touched on the other thing you can do on your yep, turn. This is just because drafting. <laughs> if you really didn't want to flip that tile for Emily, you could say, you know what? I have some tiles. I can actually spend some of these to get some tiles out on my board. And when you're placing this, this is actually a really creative thing they did. On the board, on these tiles, they have all these symbols. There's a tree, a bird, some butterflies. Those in particular all represent values. So the tree is one single singular tree. It's one. A, the bird has two wings. It's a two. There's three butterflies. You get the idea. When you place, say, a butterfly, you have to spend three tiles. This is a little like Summer Pavilion yes. if you've ever played that. Yes. Uh, the the tile you're placing itself counts as part of that cost. So mm -hmm. if I placed a butterfly, I'd need to either get rid of two more butterfly tiles. Yep. And you have to keep in mind, it can't be of the same color as the one you're placing. Again, that whole concept of two identical tiles is always rearing its ugly head as yes. a limitation, almost in everything you do here. So what's nice too is though that you start with some wilds and you can get wilds throughout the game. That's these gray ones here. So you have a bit of flexibility. I never really felt like you know, I was really pressed in a corner. It, having these wilds really makes you feel a little bit like I have some options still floating around of things I could do. Yeah, and another thing like Summer Pavilion, and to a point you just made, as you're getting these tiles, there's going to be different things that score throughout the game. You've got this wheel in the middle. So in the first round, we know that we're going to score the dark green, the light blue, and trees. Yep. And each of those tiles, straight up, is going to score, for, if you have them on your player board at the end of the round, those are going to score you one point each. And then the following round, you're going to get a little bit more for some other things. It's going to score birds and butterflies and just the dark purple. So you get the idea that things are going to score throughout the game. Then there's end game scoring because there's a lot of things you're going to want to do on here mm -hmm. in terms of trying to get strings of all the purples. So there are six different uh, symbols and six different colors. You're trying to get some big points by having all the purples because as you're placing them out here, there are some guidelines. You can't have a contiguous group of all of one color that has the same symbols in it. Meaning if I had a bunch of light purples, I can't have two light purple butterflies or two light purple trees in that group. So this, as you can tell, is some of the strategy here because I could look over at Emily and go, oh, you really need that one purple yes. tree. Yes 
to finish off all of her purples, which can give you some big points. So there's absolutely some hate drafting going on here. <laughs> Board. You do want to be careful, though, because in the last round, anything you have left that you haven't used is going to be yeah. negative points against you. In our play that we just had, no one really got burnt too badly yeah. with negative tiles. I think there we was all... only like three points at a, most. A that couple was negative. negative points at the end. But it is one of those things you have to be careful of. It's almost to push your luck because mm -hmm. you're trying to gather as many points as you can. There's certain ones that are going to score early. You might want to strategize and say, you know what, I'm going to play the long game and yeah. really set up my board. Um, and like I said, we've glossed over a lot here. Emily, is there There's anything so else more. that you want to say about how the game scores at the end? So what I did like at the end scoring was the player board that we have at the here where it goes down exactly what everything is that scores. So you're going to score for every track that you have of each color every one for each symbol. And it was really easy as we were going through it to just be like, did you have any blue? No. It's very yes, systematic. No. Yes. Um, which I think can be very confusing when you're looking at your board and it's just a whole jumble of things and you're like, what scores, what gets points? Um, they really laid it out in a way where it's not as confusing to actually put it out on the player board, how many points you're getting for everything. Yeah, and there, there's a lot of things just pulling you in a lot of different directions in this one, more so by an infinite degree than the other Azuls. <clears throat> I don't know if we mentioned this, but you're also, you have the potential of surrounding these sort of landmarks on your board as you build it out. Yep. And when you do that, you're able to get more of these wild tiles. And these wild tiles are, Which is are huge. similar to in Pavilion, yes. right? Where you, you surrounded something and you got extras from the middle. This one, you're surrounding something, you get a certain number of wilds, um, but that can really help you out in the end. And wilds are worth points, positive points at the end. Um, so even if you were just getting them to get the points, it's great, but they also can be really helpful when you're going for those high number strategies, right? When you're trying to get, put a six on the board, maybe getting a lot of wilds will kind of help you get there rather than having to try to find six of one color or symbol. Um, but I, I love the part that you're doing, it's kind of two layered, right? Like in all the other Azuls, it was one layer of like, it's, it's colors you're looking to match. In this one, you have kind of two options. Yeah. And so you're, you're thinking through a lot of different choices every time when you're drafting and even when you're playing resources because you're thinking, I mean, should I pay for this with greens or should I pay for this with birds? Was I going to use another green that I was going to use to pay for it? How, how do I want to do this, right? Do I use resources to put them on my board or do I use resources to pay? And that kind of using them for both can be a lot to balance and think through. It is. It's, it's, it's quite a bit more to think through than any of the other Azuls. I would say my first reaction to this is that it is a far more enthusiast game level gamer yep. version of the Azul sort of experience and a very different Azul sort of experience mm -hmm. in general. Um, we were talking before we started filming, Emily asked me, if this weren't called Azul, yes. would you think it felt like Azul? And she and I, uh, differ on our opinion here. I think you feel it's a little bit more like Azul than I did. I do. I really do. When I played it, I thought to myself, yes, this is Azul for me. I'm like, I'm drafting things. I'm placing things. I've got my little tiles that I love. It looks very pretty. Um, so it felt like Azul to me, even when some of these mechanics or the way they were going together was new. But you thought more. Yeah, I, I felt the mechanisms and face value are very different. Even though there are tiles here or sort of these these uh, extensions with the tiles on top of them obviously that's reminiscent of it mm -hmm. um, what I do see as I played it is some of the things we talked about particularly with summer pavilion this definitely feels like a a lot of those threads of DNA from summer pavilion in yes. here the wilds the bonuses the surrounding things the the things that you have going on in your head in terms of puzzling out what you're trying to do on your board and feeling like many things are pulling you in different directions, is there. But what you're doing mechanically on your turn feels very different to me. Yeah. You're drafting or you have the decision to place. And then you can just pass. And you know when you pass, everyone else can just keep doing stuff as, as long as they can. And also, we didn't even mention this. The, the first player token, unlike I think a lot of the Azuls, there's... I don't think any redeeming quality to getting this. It didn't feel that way, for sure. <laughs> because even the idea of being first 
isn't so great in the following round because at the beginning of a round, this just starts as an individual stack with four tiles mm -hmm. on it. And if those four tiles come out and they're not exactly a great mix of tiles, it's not great to go first. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest thing I can say for this is it feels like the first giant evolution yes. for Azul, yes. but still an evolution of Azul. Yeah, you I, agree with that? I agree. I totally agree. If this wasn't called Azul, if this was by a completely different game, I would still think like, I'd be playing this thinking, wow, this is kind of like Azul, right? Um, but I do like what you said about how we're puzzling it out. This feels like a puzzle. It feels like everything has like one spot where it should go. And really you have a lot of different options, but it feels like you're just trying to fit everything in just the right spot, right? I had a time where I'm like, oh man, I need this one, this one dark purple bird and I just hope it comes out because that's gonna fit the perfect spot in my puzzle. Yeah, and then the last thing I would say about that puzzle before we wrap up is this is the first one that genuinely feels like a complete sandbox of a puzzle that you've got mm -hmm. here. Yeah. The other ones have a sort of set thing that you're working within. Even Summer Pavilion. Yep. Very much so in Summer Pavilion. This one, now you're choosing where to go. This one, you're building. Yeah, where it you starts go. out very blank. It like, starts out with next to nothing, just this one central mm -hmm. tile. You're adding the extent, the garden extensions, and then you're placing your tiles. I mean, you can see these two boards, these three boards look very, very different. very different from one another. So it's going to give you a little bit more of a sandboxy feel with what you're doing on your board. I think that's the other big difference that I would point out. And like I said, we have absolutely, you have probably have no idea how to play the game yet. And we will do a full review when this game becomes more readily available. We were allowed to borrow this copy just for a night so that we could get it played thoroughly and give you some of our first thoughts, which is what we wanted to do. Yeah. This yeah. is definitely gonna be on my purchase list. Um, I'm super excited to bring it out and keep playing it. I wanna see what it looks like at two player, um, just yeah. to see how that interaction is. But I really liked it at three. I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought it was just the right amount of time. And it felt challenging, but not super brain burning. where after the end I was like, all right, we're done. <laughs> yeah, and I would say if you're an enthusiast gamer, and I consider myself an enthusiast gamer, enthusiast gamer, I like medium weight games, but I know there are some people out there who've kind of over the years turned their nose up at Azul as being sure. sort of the newest gateway and like, oh no, not Azul. This is something worth you taking a look at for sure, because this sure. is going to push some buttons that I don't think you're expecting them to push. So that's what we have for Azul Queen's Garden right now. If you have any questions at all, please make them in the comments below. We will try harder to explain how the game is played if you have any questions <laughs> down there. But until next time, make sure everyone has fun at the table, and we'll see you then. Congratulations, you got to the end of one of our videos. Now, if you want more practice, just click on the video over here. It's another video. You might not have seen it yet, so click on it. If you don't want to do that, at least click on the subscription button below. That always helps us. And if you want notifications, please ring that bell.